Hello friends, have you ever wondered why the nucleus fails to rotate even after you performed a good hydro dissection? Well, if you are wondering what could have gone wrong, let me try to explain the concept. In cortical cleavage hydro dissection, the fluid wave is injected between the posterior capsule and the peripheral cortex. Now this leaves behind a smooth interface allowing for a smooth rotation of the nucleus and epinucleus complex over the posterior capsule. However, if the plane of the fluid wave passes more centrally, like between the epinucleus and the peripheral cortex, the resultant interface will be jagged and it will be sticky as well. Now, which is the reason why even if you had noticed a good rise of the central nucleus and even spotted a good fluid wave when the nucleus rotation is attempted it fails to do so let me demonstrate this in this case this is a grade 2 nucleosclerotic cataract the capsulorexis is being carefully performed the visibility is not very good. Probably I should have stained the capsule in this case. There is no red glow at all. Now once the capsular axis has been completed, note the hydro dissection procedure. In this case, I am using a round cannula because my usual hydro dissection bevel cannula was not available. This is a 27 gauge round cannula. The fluid flowing out of it will pass in a horizontal direction. And even if you pass it underneath the peripheral edge of the capsular axis and inject, sometimes you may not get it in the right plane because the fluid passes horizontally out of it. In this case, the rise of the central nucleus is clearly visible and the nucleus is rocking as well, which is why I thought this nucleus will rotate. What I prefer to do is this cannula, which is a bevel cannula, the fluid flow is coming from a slightly upward direction and therefore. More often than not, you will find the right plane for cortical cleavage hydro dissection. This is a single important step that I would like you to incorporate in your hydro dissection procedure. Now, let us come back to the original case and see how it progressed. The procedure that I am going to follow is a direct chop procedure, which is my technique of choice for almost all grades of cataract. I impale the phaco tip into the nucleus core and I create the chop but I find that the nucleus is not rotating. We have two options either to repeat the hydro dissection procedure, it will be difficult because of the ruffling up of cortex. So I try to do an in situ chop and at this point I see that my hydro dissection wave has actually pass between the epinucleus and the endonucleus junction, the epinucleus shell is still left behind. This clearly shows that the plane of hydro dissection was not in the cortical cleavage plane at all. Probably it was more central and this is the reason why the nucleus is not rotating. However, do not get put off by the fact that the nucleus does not rotate. You can continue with the phaco emulsification. Do a type of in situ chop. The fluid wave that comes out from the irrigating ports of the, the phaco handpiece will pass between the cortex and the posterior capsule and it will create a hydro dissection wave. So, by the time you are down to cracking two or three nuclear fragments, you will find to your surprise that the entire nucleus, epinucleus complex is quite freely rotating. This is because of the high flow of the irrigation aspiration fluid system. When you set a aspiration flow rate of say about 40 cc per minute, this high flow rate will cause a hydro dissection to happen. So once the nucleus rotates, the management of this cataract is not very difficult. It's a grade 2 nucleus sclerotic cataract. However, after removing the nuclear fragments, I'm left with a thick epinuclear shell, which you have to remove very carefully. In this case, I'm collapsing the shell by passing the Sinsky hook underneath it and gently lifting it. While doing so, make sure that the tip of the Sinsky hook is facing laterally and not posteriorly.
there is just a little bit of peripheral cortex and some peripheral fibrosis as well. So the cortical aspiration is then completed. Therefore, it's important to understand that a good cortical cleavage hydrodissection is imperative to achieve rotation of the nucleus. And the rotation of the nucleus is important in FACO because we need to position the fragments and the pieces diametrically opposite the side of incision in order to apply certain maneuvers like a trenching or a direct chop onto the pieces. While the intraocular lens is injected, there is a kind of IOL shoot. This is probably because the lens is a little rigid. However, no serious damage has been done and the intraocular lens is then carefully maneuvered and implanted inside the capsular bag. So the most important thing in getting the nucleus to rotate is to get the right plane of hydrodissection and the instrument that will really help you to get this plane is using a bevel type of cannula. We need to take it to the periphery, slightly tent the capsule, anterior capsule and then inject a firm fluid wave which will cause the cortical cleavage hydrodissection. It is also a good idea to check for rotation of the nucleus before attempting FACO. And even if you do not get the right plane of dissection and the nucleus fails to rotate, remember that you can do a in situ chop, create two or three fragments and by the time you are done, the fluid flow that comes from the aspiration flow rate will free up the corticocapsular plane and the nucleus will begin to rotate and make things easy for you. Now this was the message I wanted to impart to you. I thank you for your attention.